Well, God bless everyone. Thanks for being here this evening. If you would, please take your Bibles and open them to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5 tonight. 1 Peter chapter 5, want to give us something I trust will help us. I trust that it's something we would all want and desire in our lives. And by the way, those of you that have just tuned in with us by way of Rumble, thank you so much for joining with us tonight here in our midweek service here at the West Marion Baptist Church. We're glad you've tuned in with us and allow us to come into your home tonight and worship with us. And in our Bible study night, we call it Wednesday Night in the Word, and we're studying 1 Peter chapter 5 tonight. And so we get you to, you can download the link and print out the study guide if you haven't already. You might still have time to do it as we get started and get going in our study tonight. We're going to be talking about something that everyone's familiar with. Everyone's heard the word a thousand times over. You've heard a hundred thousand messages preached on it. You're familiar with it. Some of you have experienced it. Some of you are familiar with it. Some of you are, uh, have uh, and enjoyed it. And that, of course, is the grace of God. How many of you are familiar with the grace of God? How many of you have experienced the grace of God? How many of you are growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? You see, we have a lot of, uh, the, the word karyos is the word that's used for the word grace and the root word meaning there of it, but it has eight words and eight different definitions for it. The word grace throughout the scripture. So the same thing, and grace is also found in the Old Testament in the Hebrew word. And it's sometimes, and it's just depending on the content and the context, as to how the word is used. Now the main meaning we always say is that the word grace means God's unmerited favor. In other words, we don't deserve it, but God gave it to us anyway. Like, for instance, we're going to talk about a little different grace tonight. It doesn't have the same meaning that the grace in Ephesians has, where it says you're saved by grace. See, that's a different meaning, a different word. That's a saving grace. Then there's where the apostles tell us to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. That's a different word, and grace is used. Then Paul talks about that we would grow in this grace, and it would abound. That's dealing with grace giving and so there's another time that it's used in, in a different light and different word so we, we have different meanings and, and use of the word grace in its content and context but tonight we're going to be looking at another different light uh, I think that all of us want and if we take it like Paul closes out most of his epistles and his letters may the grace of God be upon you now when he's talking to believers he's not talking about them being saved they're already saved so it's again a different word Word, different meaning. What Paul is saying there is, may all the favor of God be on you and the peace of God rule and reign in your hearts and his countenance shine upon your face. So you see, you have eight different words, eight different meanings. And so one we're going to look at tonight that Peter's talking about. How many of you have heard the expression walking in the Spirit? How many of you have heard living in the Spirit? Filled with the Spirit, led with the Spirit. You know, we're all familiar with those terms, and certainly we ought to apply all of those in our lives. Then we hear about faith, don't we? And we're to live by faith. We're to walk in faith. You know, we're to come to God in faith. So we hear a lot about faith. So tonight, our brother Peter's going to tell us how we can walk in the favor of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to walk in the favor of God. And we're talking about walking as an action verb. And when we add the I-N-G to it, we're not just going to walk. We're going to walk in, so we're going to keep walking. It's something we're going to do. And tomorrow when you wake up this tomorrow morning, Lord, today I want to walk in your favor. Amen? That's walking in His grace. I mean, I think every person that's listening or watching certainly wants the faith of God on their, uh, the grace of God on their life. And they certainly want the favor of God on their life. You know, just think now, we can walk daily in the favor of God. And, uh, P and Peter's going to tell us how to do that and help us with that this evening, if my throat will hold out. But anyway, let's read the scripture. I'll draw your attention to chapter 5. Beginning in verse number 5, we're going to look at nine of verses, five verses here. He says, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. 
Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Father, we thank you for tonight. Once again, Wednesday night in the Word, as we get into the Word now, we ask the Holy Spirit to be our divine teacher and guide as He guides us into truth, as He gives us illumination, as He gives us understanding of the Scriptures, and as we gain knowledge tonight and understanding, then the Holy Spirit of God give us wisdom to apply it to our lives. And Lord, I don't think of any person that's here tonight in the auditorium, those that are listening by radio, watching on television, on the Facebook, on the YouTube, on the uh, Rumble, Father, live with us right now. I, I don't. I can't. Under, I, I can't even imagine that nobody would want to walk in the favor of God. I just. I, I can't imagine that. I think everybody that's listening and watching tonight, however means or whatever, it wants to walk in the favor of God. And I pray we can learn that this evening as we take a look at this passage of Scripture that Peter has given to us. Holy Spirit, anoint our voices, our mouth, our throat. Father, we ask you to give us clarity today that the, so there would be no misunderstanding and be uh, any type of uh, distraction to anyone. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and glory for it. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen and amen. And praise the Lord. Well, if you and I want to wake up tomorrow morning and walk in the favor of God, now remember, we're talking about the favor of God. We're talking about all of God's favor on your life. Amen. You can say, you see, but it's not a carte blanche thing. It doesn't come by wishing it. It doesn't come by osmosis. And it doesn't come because we just think you and I are so wonderful. Okay, there, there's, there's some things now, we see when we talk about the, 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 the saving grace of Ephesians, yes, no strings attached, that's free. That doesn't cost you anything. But we're not talking about that kind of favor tonight. We're talking about God's favor on our lives, and God says, okay, uh, then I want you to walk uh, in, in that favor if you want that favor on your life. And so we can have that, and the first thing we need to do, we have to have a submissive walk. It has to be a submissive walk. Look at verses 6 and 7 again with me. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, folks, if people are going around uh, in worry and constant anxiety and worry and fear, you're not casting all your care on the Lord. Now, if God says he'll take care of you, if you'll but what do you have to do? You've got to cast your care on the Lord. And, and the Lord's going to take care of you. And you need to humble yourself uh, before the, hand, the almighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So we need to have a submissive walk. Je Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth, there's that ith, Continual, present participle, continually abides in me, and I in him. The same bringeth, continually brings forth much fruit. For without me, church, you can do nothing. See, folks, you gotta, we got to get to that place, you see. That's why he talks about, James talks about here being humble and humbling yourself, you see. Because God resisted the proud, but gives grace, favor to the humble. And so we, that's what we want to do tonight. So let's talk about this submissive walk. First of all, we need to have grace to humble. Grace to humble. And the reason why we need God's grace to humble ourselves is because God resists the proud. Amen. God's going to resist the proud. Now, folks, you, if you're full of pride or got pride, me, you, or anybody, don't expect to have the favor of God walking around tomorrow on your life because you're not going to walk in God's favor if you're going around like a peacock you know, or a banny rooster or, or a braggart or boasting or bragging or thinking you're something or you never do anything wrong. Everybody else is wrong but you. You know, you're the one that's always right. Everybody else is marching to a different beat of the drum. Uh, you see, you got a pride problem. Amen. Uh, if you think you got it all together, know it all, you got a pride problem. And so, if, if, I don't know about you, but tomorrow when I get up, Lord, I, I want to have a humble walk today. And I want to walk humbly before you because I want to walk in your favor today. God, I want your favor all over my life today. Whatever that favor is, you understand that? I mean, I want that. He says, okay, you can have it. 
If you're willing to submit and have a submissive walk and humble yourself, you can have all that favor if that's what you desire. So God, why? Because God resists the proud. Now church, I don't know about you, but I don't want God resisting me. You're not going to win. And so there's no sense in, in having God resist you. Hey, that's not good. And you know, it's bad enough when the world resists us. You know what? And we get frustrated with that. And we get upset and uptight. And even friends, family, you know, members, somebody are resisting us. And we you know we don't like it. And, and we, we, we go through all that. But can you imagine God resisting you? You know, it may be bad enough to say, well, my family or my loved one, my, my mate, my, even my kids, whatever, you know, are resisting me. And, 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 and you just think about it. You don't like it. But can you imagine if God's resisting you? Oh, I, I don't want to do that. I, I want to have this grace to humble myself. I, wanna, I want God to resist the proud. Look what he says in James 4, 6. But he giveth more, what? Grace, more favor. Hello, anybody want more favor? God gives more favor. Are you with me? Say amen. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace. Notice that word giveth. We're in that present participle. God continually gives favor to the humble. Now, man, I don't know about you. I want God's favor. I'll tell you what. God's favor is a whole lot better than his discipline. Amen. God's favor is a whole lot better than his chastisement. Amen. And spankings. Oh, and, and God's favor is a whole lot better than him resisting you. So we're, 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 trying to work, we're trying to walk in grace. We don't want to walk in that, in that favor of God tomorrow. And God exalts the humble. God exalts the humble. What we read that. He said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Now, folks, we ought to still humble ourselves before God and be submissive to him whether he exalts us or not. Amen. God doesn't know you and I anything. He's not bound or obligated to us. He doesn't owe us anything. But he does say, hey, I'll tell you what I want to do, though. I want to pour out all my favor on you, son and daughter. But I'm just asking you a few things of you. I'm asking you to walk humbly and submit. And if you will, man, I'm going to pour out my favor on your life. If you don't, I'm going to resist you. Real simple. Not hard to understand. This is black and white. Not, not hard to get a hold of this. Listen to what Jerry Bridges. Jerry, I love Jerry Bridges. He writes a book, uh, uh, The Pursuit of, of Holiness. Fantastic book. You ought to get it and read it. Humility then is a recognition that we are at the same time uh, a worm, Jacob. You remember when Jacob said he was a worm? Worm, Jacob, and a mighty threshing sledge, completely weak and helpless in ourselves, but powerful and useful by the grace of God. And so, man, I tell you what, a submissive walk tonight. That is a grace to humble because God resists the proud, but he gives grace uh, to the humble. Look at Philippians with me, chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And being found in the fashion as a man, we're talking about the Lord Jesus here now. He hum what did he do? He humbled himself. Now, folks, if he can humble himself, you and I can. And became obedient, there's submission he submissively, he submitted to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath highly exalted him. What did God just tell us, Peter said? That if we will humble ourselves, God will exalt us. Highly exalted him. Now that phrase, highly exalted, is the only place you find it there. And given him a name, which is a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. I'd say that's a pretty good exalt exaltation, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say that's a... Now, you notice when Peter said that God will exalt you, he didn't say highly exalt you. The only one who gets that phrase is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so here we go. We got Elizabeth Elliot here. She says, does God ask us to do what is beneath us? This question will never trouble us again if we consider the Lord of heaven taking a towel and washing feet. Hello. Randy Acorn, great author there. He says, the worse we realize we are, the greater we realize God's grace is. Oh, my. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. Paul said he was a wretched man. David, I believe, said he was a worm and a grasshopper. Hello. Man, Jacob the worm. Oh, you see, 
God exalts the humble. He resists the proud. And we want to have this submissive walk in our lives to the Lord and submit to His will, submit to His word, submit to His authority. You see, that's what we want to do if we want to have God's favor tomorrow. And then grace to trust. Oh, we need this wonderful grace to trust. Philippians 4.13 says what? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this, and I quote, Our sorrows are, are all, like, why, like, why, uh, like ourselves, mortal. And there are no mortal sorrows, and there are no immortal souls. They come, but they blessed be gone. They also go. Like birds of the air, they fly over our heads, but they cannot make their abode in our souls. We suffer today, but we shall rejoice tomorrow. Amen. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts for the night. But joy comes in tomorrow. You see, uh, tomorrow. Uh, Hudson Taylor, great missionary there. Uh, well, that was the first book we had to read in missions class. was a book on Hudson Taylor, Adonine Johnson. Yeah, Adonine Johnson. I'm going back uh, 50 years, man. It's hard to remember some of these things. Okay. All of God's greats have been weak men who did great exploits for God because they reckoned on His being faithful. Psalms 55, 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So our first lesson that Peter wants us to learn, so that we can uh, have all of God's favor tomorrow on our lives, so we can walk in God's favor, is to have a submissive walk. Submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? How do we do that? Through humbleness and being humble. Why? Well, because God resists the humble. And, I mean, the proud, but He exalts the humble. So which do you want to be? See, you have a choice there. You can be proud, but if you do, God will resist us. But if we want to be humble, then God's going to exalt us. And it doesn't matter how He does it. Amen? Amen. And, so, and, and so, so we need this. All right? And then we want to trust God in all this. Now notice in verse 8 what he tells us here. There's a second thing he does in this, uh, wanting all of God's favor in our lives each and every day. And by the way, when I'm saying until tomorrow or something like that, that doesn't mean you're just going to get his favor tomorrow. I'm talking every day of your life. You know, you, you and I ought not want to go any day at all without the favor of God on our life. I don't care what we're going through, what's happening, what's going on. I mean, we ought to get up every morning and say, Lord, if this is Peter tells me, this is what I've got to do. I've got to submit to you. All right, Lord, I'm going to submit my will to your will today. Lord, I'm going to walk in humility today before you. And whether you exalt me or not, that, that's up to you. But I'm going to walk submit because I want to walk in all of your favor today. God, I want your favor on my life. Amen. Boy, I went somewhere last night, you know I did? And man, the God's favor was on us. Boy, it was fantastic. One thing right after another, God's favor, God's favor, God's favor, just, just literally blew us away. And uh, we just were praising the Lord for us. This is going to help with today, tonight. All right, praise God. All right, notice the next thing he says to us in verse 8. Let's read it there. Be sober, be vigilant. Now he tells us two things there we need to do in our walk so that we can experience the favor of God in our lives. Why? Because your adversary, well, who's my adversary? The devil. As a roaring lion walketh about, there he's continually walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So the second thing we need to have is a sober watch. If we want to walk tomorrow in the favor of God and have all his favor on our life tomorrow, no matter where we go, what we do. And I, I do that all the time. I mean, when I'm driving and going someplace and I've got to be someplace, I'm always saying, now, Lord, if you don't mind, I would appreciate your favor here. Uh, I would like a parking place right up front. Now, you, you may think those things are ridiculous, but see, I don't. I want God's favor on my life, and I desire His favor. And, and Lord, if I'm walking humbly before you, you see, and, and I'm trusting you and believing in you, and, and I have your favor on my life, then I know you're going to have favor on my life and you're going to find me a parking place right up front. Amen. And I'll drive around. Right there it is. I go, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your favor. I get in the grocery store, Lord, I got to check out here, and I did, and, I'm, and I've been, I came in here, it was full, and, and I said, now I know everybody always chooses to leave the same time I do. So I know the registers are going to be full in the lines. So if you don't mind, I'm going to walk around here just a bit more, and I'm going to pray for your favor. So that when I come and go start strolling up to the, to the checkout, there's going to be one open. 
You say, you do that? Yeah, all the time. Same thing when I go to the drive-thru. Oh, God, please have your favor on me when I go to the drive-thru today. I don't want to pull up and see 25 cars in, in line. If not, I'm going. <laughs> and then I get there, to, to, I get there, to, oh, man, oh, man, praise God, I'm, I'm, I'm the second one in line. This is great. That's, that's, that's your favor, man. That's great. So I'm sitting there, and I'm going, oh, now it's going to be just my luck. The guy in front of me is ordering the whole store. Yeah. And sure enough, Oh, you sit there, you wait, and you wait. And I'm going, where's my favor, Lord? Where's my? You said, well, you're second in line, man. I mean, you could have been, and you look behind you, there's six more behind you. He said, you could be back there. I go, yeah, you're right, you're right, okay, okay. But I tell you, I know this guy's ordering 15 sub sandwiches. I just want one. And sure enough, out comes a bag, and here comes another bag. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Ah, oh, praise God. Ask for his favor. Walk in his favor tomorrow. You see, what a joy to know you get up to him in the morning and say, Lord, I'm going to submit to you and submit my will to you today. Father, I'm going to walk in, in, in obedience. I'm going to walk in humility so that I can have your favor on my life. Where I'm driving, where I'm going. Hey, you need God's favor on I-75. I can tell you that right now. You need God's favor on 200 now. You need God's favor on 17th, Southwest 17th. You need God's favor on 40 in the boulevard. And it's getting any more. You need God's favor out here on 27. I'm telling you, man. And tonight, coming down 464 here to the church, I told Carol, where are all these cars coming from? There are that many people live back here. And just one right after another. Whoa, 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 whoa. I go, whoa. And out there, there's no speed limit. Yeah, that's the truth. But you better be walking, you better be walking in God's favor, man. I want God's favor of my life when I get in that car. Amen. And so praise the Lord. So sober watch. What does that mean? All right, right off the bat, A there. It means to be alert to danger. Well, don't you think that the devil walking around like a roaring lion, you think he's pretty dangerous? Oh, yeah, he's out to devour you. He's out to eat your lunch, devour your home, your family, your business, your wife, your children, your marriage, everything. I mean, he's out to devour the church, so you got to be alert to danger. Because I don't know about you, man, I don't want to be caught up in danger. I want all of God's favor on my life. And I can guarantee you, danger isn't part of God's favor. Hello? But it is part of the devil's. you got to be alert, so or be alert to danger. Look at what Ephesians 5.15, Paul says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Our slogan, wise men still seek him. A fool says in his heart says there is no God. But a wise man or woman is still going to seek Christ, you see. So we praise the Lord and walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Ephesians 6, 11, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil, the tricks of the devil, the traps of the devil. I mean, we could go on and on and list all that stuff. But hey, the first thing i got to do, i got to have a submissive walk. That's your first S. Your second S is you got to have a sober watch. All right, and what do you got to do? you got to be alert to danger. Then you need to be aware of the devastation. you got to be aware of the devastation. And what does the devil want to do to us all the time? He's always tempting us. He's always throwing temptation up at us. Now, it doesn't have to be immoral temptation. It can be any kind of temptation. The devil's going to know your weakness, and he's going after it. I guarantee you. Amen. The devil knows your weakness. He knows my weakness. He knows my strengths. He's not going to bother me with my strengths because I won't, have no, I won't get nowhere with that. He's too strong in that area or he's got that area down pat. You know, he, he's got that taken care of. But, ah, he's weak over here. So there's where I'm going. I'm targeting the weakness. And the devil's going after the weakness. That's why we've got to put on the helmet of salvation because it protects our mind and our thoughts because that's where the devil is going to attack us. And I don't want temptation. I want God's favor. I want to talk about favor of being saved. I already got that. I'm not worried about that, okay? Amen. On his favor, we need to be aware of the devastation. We must be watchful for the temptation. Watchful for the temptation. Warren Wiersbe put it this way. Who better than Peter would know about the prowling of Satan? 
Huh? Yeah, how about that, right? Uh, uh, several times Jesus warned Peter that Satan was after him. But he failed to heed the warning. Too many Christians have gone to sleep, opening the way for Satan to work. And you see, and, and, and why, why would you want to go walking around all day tomorrow in temptation when you could go walking around with the favor of God on you? Well, I mean, well, well I, I, God's going to give that to me. Yeah, he's going to give it if you're submissive. He's going to give it to you if you're humble. Hello. He's going to give it if you're trusting. He's going to give it to you if you're alert. He's going to give it to you if you're aware and being watchful. Mark 14, 37, 38. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping and said unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Isn't that where the devil gets you? How many times have you ever been praying to the Lord? And I mean, you really pouring out your heart, and all of a sudden, here comes the thoughts. Here comes all kinds of stuff. Tempted, right? Right in the middle of a prayer meeting. Why? Right, right where you're trying to have a quiet time and talk to the Lord. I'll tell you another time he attacks you. You can read the Word of God. You can be right in here and sitting here reading the Word of God and enjoying it. And I mean, the old devil will come in and boom, boom, boom. He starts throwing things in there to you, man. And you got to tell him, get to the out of here and uh, you know and, 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 and tell him where to go and rebuke him in the name of the Lord and, and get back into the word get your mind back on track get your thoughts back on track because if not the devil is going to get you and the biggest place he gets Christians today is a computer on a computer and on phones oh my how are you going to walk in the favor of God if you're living in temptation see it's not going to happen and, and boy if anybody knows about this Peter does that's why he's writing, trying to help us. Peter knows all about this, man. He knows about the traps and the schemes. He knows what happened to him. He knows what, what trouble he got into. I mean, a whole nine yards. And Peter says, no, no, here's what I want my believers to do. I want them to walk in the favor of God. Peter says, I want all the favor of God on the believer tomorrow in his life, in her life, and the next day, and the next day. So here's what you got to do. Man, you got to be submissive. You got to walk humbly before thy God. Don't be proud like a peacock and start to trust him. Be sober, be alert, be aware, be watchful. Charles Spurgeon put it this way. Or Thomas Adams said this, I quote from Thomas Adams, Satan, like a fisher, baits his hook according to the appetite of the fish. Hello. Now when it comes to temptation, whatever your appetite is, that's what the devil's going to bait. That's what he's going to throw out in front of you. Because he's, he's out to fish. He's out to catch you. He is. He's out to set his hook in you and me. So keep careful. Charles Spurgeon put it this way. When thou sleepest, think that thou art, think thou art resting on the battlefield. And when thou walkest, suspect an ambush in every hedge. It's almost like there is a bandit out there under every rock. Amen. Be watchful, be careful. Then we must be mindful. Here's the one we really got to learn, church. We must be remindful of the consequences. Whatever choices we make, there are consequences. Man, I'm telling you, if you make good, sound, biblical choices, there's going to be good consequences. You make spirit-filled and spirit-led choices, there will be good, biblical, spirit-led choices. You know, you, you, you just, you, it will. But if you make foolish ones, or I make foolish ones, or we make wrong ones or bad ones, then expect the consequences are going to be the same. Because they're going to, we're, there are going to be consequences with every decision and choice we make. And then, by the way, with those, with those consequences... And choices, let me remind you, there is a day called accountability. The Bible says there's coming a day when we are going to stand before the judge of the universe. And we're going to stand before God and give an account. There's that accountability of everything we have done, thought, or said before the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow, you see, think be mindful. See, that's why he says, be alert, be sober, be watchful. You see why? You need to be mindful of the consequences. Amen. Quote, I know well that when Christ is nearest, Satan also is busiest. I've, I've found that to be true in the ministry. Found that to be here true in the church. But mindful of the consequences. We had a 
a brother of ours in, in our church here now has been gone for several years, passed away. And unfortunately, he, I was with him and before he passed away, and I knew there was something going on in his life because he could see it. And I said, you need to talk. We need to talk. What, what's going on? What's happening? He said, well, he said, Pastor, before I was saved, I didn't live a very good life. I got messed up with immorality. I got messed up with drugs. I got messed up using needles. And he said, now I'm suffering the consequences. He said, I know my sins are forgiven and washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I know I'm going to heaven and I'm dying and I have peace about it. He said, I have hepatitis C. I said, well, how did you get it? He said, dirty needles and prostitutes. I said, yeah, that'll do it. You see, it was okay then, and it was all right. He wasn't being very watchful. Sober, he was lost then, I understand that. But even a lost man knows, or a lost woman knows, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's not the road to go down. That road will end up putting you in the morgue or on a cold slab in the city morgue, or in jail for the rest of your life. One or the other. Or with diseases you'll never get cured of. And he said, now, he says, it's caught up to me. He said, my sins are forgiven, washed and cleaned and forgotten. He said, that I'm grateful and thankful for. But I am paying the consequences of it. And he died. So friend, be mindful of the consequences of the decisions you make, you see. And even, you see, and here's the same thing, such folks. He could have been saved and still have done those things. Okay? But he would still pay the consequences. You see. There are consequences with our actions and so forth. And see, and if you're a saved man or woman... It may not be those things we just mentioned, but why would you ever want to suffer the consequences of those when you can have the favor of God on your life? That's why we need to be mindful. That's why we need to help those that are struggling the best that we can. While God most often appeals to our wills uh, through our reason, Sin and Satan usually appeals to us through our desires. Jerry Bridges. All right, the third S tonight, and we're done. We'll wrap it up, okay? The first one is a submissive walk. The second one is a sober watch. The third is a steadfast warfare. A steadfast warfare. Look at verse 9 with me now, we're done. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Who's he talking about? The devil. Okay. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now James tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from you. But before he said that, he said submit yourselves unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, the devil is not going to flee from you if you and I are not submitting to the will and the authority of God. And the word of God in our lives. We're going the other direction, you see. So we want to be, we want to be, we need to understand that we are in a steadfast warfare. And what do we do here? We resist with the truth. Resist with the truth. Uh, the readers, however, are not called to fear the devil. They are called to opposition. See, we're not called to fear the devil. We're called to opposition. Longman said that. That's why James says in 4 7, submit yourselves, there's that submissive walk, uh, therefore to God. See, there what you got to do first. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, you and I are going to have a hard time resisting the devil if we're not submitting to God. See, we're not going to be walking in the favor of God if we're not submitting to God and being humble and, being, and, 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 and trusting and being sober and watchful and alert and aware and watchful and mindful. We're going to be, oh, we're going to fall to the prey of the enemy. 
And oh, we don't want that for our lives. Hey, folks, we may have 20 more years to live, some of us in here. Some of us longer than that. Well, wouldn't you like to live for the next 20 years with the favor of God on your life? I mean, all of His favor? Every day in your life when you can and we can, but it's a choice we have to make. So steadfast to warfare, resist with the truth, okay? And so that's what we have to do. And then we must resist in the faith. Amen. We must resist in the faith. Okay, again, I'll be quoting Spurgeon here. It is written, stand upon it. And if the devil were 50 devils in one, he could not overcome you. That is, if you're resisting in the faith. Okay, on the other hand, if you leave... Believe the faith. It is written, Satan knows more about reasoning than you do. He is far older, has studied mankind very thoroughly, and knows all the weak points. Therefore, the contest will be an unequal one. Do not argue with him, but wave in his face the banner of God's word. Satan cannot endure the infallible truth, for it is death to the falsehood of which he is the father of. Amen. Now there you go. God's given us some weapons to handle old split foot. Matthew 4, 4 says this, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That was Jesus. He was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days by the devil. And he was tempted in all three areas. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And how did he defeat him? With the word. It is written. It is written. He defeated him with the word. Now when we, walk, when we look at Jesus' life, and yes, we know he was in his divinity, he was God. But at the same time, he was 100% man. Now, how many of you believe, if you've ever studied the life of Christ, which is all the epistles, the, the, the Gospels, the Gospels, all four of the Gospels, are all about the life of Christ. Okay? You want to know that? Well, in his three and a half years, we know about him, because we don't know much about him except when he was born. Then he was 12 years old in the temple. After that, we don't hear about him until he's 30 years of age. All right? But how many of you think that he had the favor of God those three and a half years? Oh, I believe he walked in the favor of God every day for three and a half years on this planet. And yeah, he faced the devil every time he faced the devil through the Pharisees and all the religious crowd and the demons of hell that had come after him and everything. But yet, at the same time, even though in his humanity he walked in humbleness before God, he showed himself as a servant. He fashioned himself in the form of a man. He became obedient even unto the death, the death of the cross. He became a servant unto us and he washed our feet and so forth. And yet he defeated the devil. And yet all that time, he had the favor of God on his life. Now, folks, if Jesus can, we can too. Because greater is he that's in you and I than he that's in the world. And that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How many things? All things. That means I can walk a submissive walk through Christ because of his strength. Come on, amen? Amen? I can, I can live a sober, I can watch soberly and live a sober life because I can do all things through Christ with strength me. I can be steadfast in the warfare against the devil because why? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I can again do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You see, we need to understand that. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now, if all of us sat here in our lives and our growing up and all that we've gone through, and we would know we could sit here and name sometimes some of the many temptations that came our way. Amen. I mean, we could name them. And we didn't escape. Even though God gave us a way to escape, we didn't take the way. And we suffer the consequences for it. We paid the price for it. Come on, talk to me. But you see, we, we don't need to do that. And, and, and tighten your seatbelts. It's going to get worse. The Scripture says so. Now, I know we just dropped all of them off of Rumble, but hey, just, somebody got to tell you the truth. Okay? It's going to get worse. You better tighten up your seatbelt. But wait a minute. I don't care how bad it gets. And I don't care how worse it gets. 
If any child of God, man or woman, boy, girl, anything, will live a sub, will walk a submissive walk and humble them before God, they can live in the favor of God no matter how bad the recession is. Hello, and it's coming. Tighten up your seatbelts. Tighten up your spending. But even in all of that, because, see, God doesn't operate on Washington or the world or economics or anybody else or NATO or anything else. He operates on heaven and operates on Him. And God says, if you'll be submissive uh, to me and, to, and walk submissively to me and submit to my authority, humble yourself, don't be prideful, trust me, be sober and watch and be alert and so forth and be steadfast. He said, I'm telling you, you can walk in my favor and live in my favor. And I want to tell you what, I want all the favor of God has for me. Amen. Don't cheat yourself out of all the favor that God has for you. Why would you settle for a little when God has a lot? See, some Christians just want a little. They want just a little bit of religion, just a little bit of church, that, you know, kind of, but, but they don't want the full package. I want the full package. I want everything God has for me. Why cheat yourself out of it all when God's got so much for you? Amen? Walking in grace. Okay, we're to walk in the Spirit, we're to walk in faith, we're to live by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, led by the Spirit. Walk in faith, live in faith, trust in faith, believe in faith. Well, Peter says here, walk in grace. Walk in the favor of God daily in your life. And he tells us how to do it. And it's not that difficult. It's not that hard. But you see, it's a decision and a choice that you and I have to make. Amen? And I can't make it for you and you can't make it for me. Simple as that. But oh, thank God. Man, we talk about all the favor of God. Now see, when, when Peter would say that, and he did that a few times himself, Peter did. That may, may, may the grace of God be upon you. He took up Paul's saying. I guess he liked it. You know, I mean, you know what he was saying? May all the favor of God be on you. But when he comes to the chapter 5 to close out the first letter, what's he tell us to do? He's given us instructions how when he was telling or later on in his letter earlier, may the grace of God be upon you. Paul signed all of his epistles that way. May the grace of God be upon you. May all of God's favor be upon you. Amen. But it just doesn't come because we say that. We have to do something. And we're not talking about salvation. We're not talking about saving grace. By the way, if you're you to get saved, God gave you the saving grace to get saved. Amen. Otherwise, you wouldn't have got saved on your own. You wouldn't have done it. For by grace are you saved through faith. Now, if you're a lost person, you're hanging around, who gave you the faith and who gave you the grace to get saved? God did. It all goes to Him. All the glory belongs to Him. Amen. And you responded to it and, and acted to it and responded to it, and it changed your life. Well, hey, man, just say, hey, don't, don't, don't leave the wonder of Christmas. And don't, don't leave uh, without the, the favor of God on your life daily in your life. Tomorrow, when you get up, you're going to go do this. You're going to go do that. You're going to get your car. You're going to go here. I tell you what, when I do, I want God's favor on my life. And I'm not going to have to wait to read one, read one of Paul's letters so he can sign the letter at the end and say, Now may the grace of God be upon you. No, I'm going to ask for God's grace to be upon me tomorrow because, Lord, I'm going to submit to your will today. Whatever that is, I'm going to do my very best to walk humbly before my God. Amen. And then I'm going to be watchful and sober and alert. Watch out for the enemy because he's out there. Oh, boy, he's out there. And he's out there to knock preachers right off their saddle. Believe me. But I, God, I want your favor. And I just don't want some of it. I want all of it. When Paul said, may all the grace of God, he meant that. May all the favor of God be upon you. Amen. I want all of God's favor. Whatever that is, whatever he's got. Amen. Why well, settle for less when you can have it all? Amen. Amen. My goodness. You know, we're the only ones that limit ourselves. And some will go, well, I got a little bit of grace, David, so that's enough. I'm good. And you know what? They go through life that way. You know, I got a little church, I got a little this, I got a little favor, you know, and so I'm good, I'm good. And they go through their whole life that way. Missing out on what God had over here for them, they could have it all, had it all. Wouldn't that be something we stand before the Lord and he goes, man, how come that's all you settled for? Well, I don't know, I'm, 
Good enough. No, no, no. You could have had it all. Oh, I'll tell you what. You don't have to be selfish or stingy, and that's not being prideful to have it all. That's what God says he'll give to you all. No, it was God requiring a steward. We're stewards. That we be found faithful. That's it. The steward is to be found faithful. The steward is a manager of somebody else's property. We're stewards of what God has given to us. Managers. He says be faithful. And then the question was asked, what does God require of man? Just three things. To do justly. To love mercy. Let's have compassion. And walk humbly before thy God. And if you'll do that, you can have all the favor of God on your life. Starting tonight, tomorrow, whatever. Wow. What a way to live, huh? What a way to live, expect in light of what's coming. What a way to live. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for once again letting us come out to your house and to meet and to gather together. Uh, to study your word and to get into the word and thank you for these five little verses here that Peter closes out pretty much here in his first letter to to the church and to the believers and uh, Father we just thank you for the instructions he's given us how that we can walk in grace and have the favor of God on our lives Lord we thank you and we praise you for it now help us to apply what we've learned tonight to put it to practice in our lives daily Lord So to do that, we need, of course, your Holy Spirit to help us. We need his wisdom, his guidance, his power. Lord, we we ask for those things that you would grant that to us so that we can apply that which we've learned in our lives and put it to practice. And the results is we will have all the favor of God on our lives. Wow, you can't ask for a better thing than that. What a deal. So, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. So help us, Lord. We're weak. We're weak. We struggle. But Lord, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Lord, we know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And Father, we know we have your word. So Lord, help us to put it to use and to apply it in our lives that we may walk in your grace, your favor. And we thank you for your saving grace that saved us. Hallelujah. Bless us now as we go. We bless you tonight, Lord. We bless heaven. And Lord, good willing, will, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. And walk in your favor. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Give us a good night's rest. We appreciate it. We're thankful and grateful for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It was 11 days journey to get from Egypt where they were at in the bondage of Egypt to cross the Red Sea to get over into Canaan to the promised land. 11 day journey and they ended up in disobedience and rebellion and a hard heart going around in a circle for 40 long years. Don't get so bad on them. How many of us have done that? Through rebellion, disobedient. Maybe we haven't walked around for 40 years in a circle. Maybe it's been four days, four hours four weeks, four months, four years, whatever it may be. The admonition is here is a warning against a hard heart. This is time of thanksgiving. It's time to have a heart of gratitude, of thanksgiving, and of giving thanks, an attitude of gratitude. That's what it's time, not to have a hard heart. There's a warning here. Don't get a hard heart. This was a time when God was leading them. Matter of fact, this is unbelievable. They got a hard heart when God was delivered them out of bondage of 440 years, I believe it was, of bondage in Egypt, delivered them. Now he was leading them to the land of milk and honey, to the promised land, and they got a hard heart. How in the world do you get a hard heart when God's leading you? How you, I get hard hearts when God is leading us through his Holy Spirit and word. Sin, disobedience, rebellion, No different, no different. Just I'm warning. It's a caution. It's a warning here. The children of Israel had seen the mighty works and the miracles of God: the feeding of the manna, the quail, the pillar of fire, uh, the 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 smoke, the cloud of smoke in the daytime, and the pillar of fire by night. I mean, my goodness, they saw God open up the Red Sea. You got to be kidding me! And you see all this mighty work, and then what did they do? The whole stinking time, 
All the miracles and everything God did for them, what did they do? They mumbled and grumbled and complained. And God says all murmuring is against Him. All murmuring is against Him. Complaining. These people were on a trip. They were on their way to the promised land, and yet they were murmuring and complaining the whole way. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Here we go. You and I are on a trip. And we're on a trip to the promised land called heaven, glory land. And what do we do on this trip, most of us? It's always complaining and whining and fussing on our journey after we've seen the work and the hand of God doing miracle after miracle in our lives. When you got saved, that was a miracle. It took a miracle for God to hang the sun and the moon and the stars in space. But when He saved my soul, that took a miracle of love and grace. It took a miracle to save me, to wash me, to cleanse me, to get my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and down in glory in heaven and all of that. And I'm on a journey. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. This world is not my home. I'm laid up so Somewhere beyond the blue, I'm going to glory. I'm going in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. And so quit complaining and whining and crying on your trip to glory land. Look what you got tonight. You have a car, you have a home, you have a beautiful home, you got clothes, you got food. Look at all the blessings you have. And yet what do we do? We mumble and grumble and complain. We're no different than them. And we're on a trip. And it's going to be a better trip than they ever thought of having. Oh, my goodness. And you know what? It wouldn't surprise me. Some of you will even complain by the way we go. Well, why do we have to go by a trumpet and a shout? Why couldn't we go this way or that way? And by the way, I mean, good night. Look how fast we're moving, man. Clothes fell off. Well, you're going to get new ones. You're going to get white robes of righteousness. Man. And you know what? Some of you will complain about the robe. I know the first people that are going to complain about their robe is men. Because you see, men love to have pockets. And they got to have pockets with their keys and change and jingle. And, you know, some of them will go around singing, oh, how my pockets did jingle when I was single. I mean, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. And so, uh, you know, but your white robe isn't going to have any pockets in it. So don't complain because you don't have no pockets. And you won't need any cash or change or jingle in your pocket. You won't need any keys because you'll have access in and out day and night, all day, 24 hours a day. You'll have access. You'll have your access card. Okay? You won't need any money because everything will be free. Thank God it'll be free. Think about this. These people's clothes and their shoes lasted 40 years. Yet they complained about it. Most of us men buy a pair of shoes that last for eternity. I'd like a pair to last 40 years. Especially at the price of them today. Good night, they want $100 for sneakers. And yet, I'm on a journey. I'm on a trip to glory. Start being thankful and grateful that trip awaits you because you're one of his sheep you heard his voice one day in a message of the gospel and you responded to that voice and you received the gospel of Jesus Christ into your heart and life your name was written down in the Lamb's book of life your name was written down in glory there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine, all mine Amen and then you can sing one of these mornings, I'm going to have a new body. On the resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Amen. Stop complaining and whining and start thanking God and praising God for what you have. 